Time to talk about Millet here on the Exam Room Podcast, brought to you by the Physicians Committee. Millet, when you think about its role in preventing a disease, you may be surprised. Matter of fact, you may not have even thought about Millet as being able to prevent a disease or help to control it. But nonetheless, a new study finds that, yes, indeed, that can, in fact, be true. And that disease we were talking about specifically is diabetes. And so here to talk about this exciting new research is the one and only Dr. Hanna Kaliova. Dr. Kaliova, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Chuck, for having me. I'm so glad that you're here again because this is next level nutrition. I have said that phrase before, but with you, I genuinely mean it. This is like nutrition 301 when you are here. I brag about your smarts all the time. So I just want you to know once again that I am in awe of how smart you are. Oh, thank you for your kind words, Chuck. <laughs> and I hope everyone will, you know, be able to benefit from the amazing science, from the progress, from the latest sci scientific evidence. It makes me so excited when I can share the knowledge with you. Oh, yeah. And people are going to reap the benefits today in a delicious way, as a matter of fact, because millet is, in fact, a delicious grain. Like, I love this. Mm -hmm. Millet bread is one of my favorite things. Millet uh, toast, as a matter of fact, is one of my favorite things ever. Like weekend breakfasts, I yeah. love me some millet bread that's been toasted. Um before we talk about that study, though, Dr. Kaliova, I want to throw a couple of numbers out there. I'm going to read this verbatim from the study. It says, it is estimated that there will be a 51% surge in diabetics globally by 2045, from 463 million in 2019 to 700 million in 2045, with type 2 diabetes accounting for about 90% of that total. Uh, you hear about that alarming increase. Mm. Is that part of the reason what's motivating you to continue to look at diabetes so closely? Absolutely. The numbers are just so alarming. And when we know um, what contributes to this rise, um, the animal product consumption and uh, the lack of understanding, people, um, many people think uh, that the, the increase in diabetes prevalence is due to the consumption of carbohydrates. And so they're cutting down on their rice and potatoes and also millet, which paradoxically won't help them. And so that's why it's so important to uh, just review the scientific evidence. And if there's uh, one dietary pattern and uh, a few specific foods that help uh, dramatically to, to improve diabetes and prevent it, we need to know about it. Before we get into that, let me ask you this. Why is it, do you think, that there are still there is still such that notion out there. So many people believe that carbs hmm. are the enemy when it comes to diabetes. And even if it's a whole food, like a sweet potato hmm. or a whole fruit, you know, if you have diabetes, you should exclude them from the diet. That's the advice that's given out far more often than what it is that we discuss here on the show. What is it going to take to flip the script on that belief? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a part of the reason is the studies that have shown that sugar-sweetened beverages increase the risk of developing obesity and type 2 diabetes. Uh, but when we tease it out, it's not the sugar, but it's the extra calories that people are consuming, uh, where, you know, drinking sodas obviously is not a healthy thing that we would, uh, that we would recommend to anyone. Uh, but it's not the sugar itself. If you eat the same amount of sugar in your meals, um, you know, you will not increase your risk of developing diabetes uh, to the same extent as when drinking sugar-sweetened beverages in addition to your meals, uh, between your meals instead of water. Uh, and so I think that uh, the research on sugar-sweetened beverages uh, may be freaking out some people uh, because of the high numbers and, and the, the increased risk of developing diabetes. And also, uh, we are kind of conditioned to look for the blood sugar uh, as, the main, uh, as the main determinant. In fact, diabetes is a laboratory uh, diagnosis. Uh, until you come to a lab and have your blood sugar tested, 
you will not know whether you have diabetes. And so uh, just the focus on blood sugar and what, in, what can increase blood sugar than carbohydrates, right? Uh, but we need to think about it um, in a more complex way. It's not only the carbohydrates that may increase your blood sugar. Uh, it's also the fats in your diet. And if you have too much fat in the diet, uh, it will be stored in the muscle and in the liver. And this will increase the insulin resistance, which means that insulin will not be working that well. It will not be able to push glucose into, um, into the cells from the bloodstream. And then uh, if, if the glucose is not able to get into the cells, it stays uh, in the blood. And that's why we have high blood sugar uh, but it's not because we were eating too many potatoes. It's because we were eating too much beef and also fish and cheese and other sources of fat. Oh, that's standard American diet. Um, but I'll tell you one thing that is not part of the standard American diet uh, is millet. So let's mm. talk about this uh, study. Let's take a, a pretty quick look at this. Let me go ahead. I know that you have uh, put together a presentation on this. So let me go ahead and add this to the screen. There you go. If you're watching this on Facebook and YouTube, thanks for watching. If you're listening to the podcast right now, you can head over to the Physicians Committee's Facebook page or YouTube channel to watch this and see the science in action up on Dr. Kaliova's screen. So with that, Dr. Kaliova, I will turn it over to you. Oh, thank you so much, Chuck. Uh, so we will just look at the findings from a systematic review and meta-analysis that has been published in the journal Frontiers of in Nutrition on the potential of millets, different kinds of millets for managing and also reducing the risk of developing type, type 2 diabetes. Uh, the study group uh, analyzed 65 studies on millet and uh, we know that millet there is many kinds of millet but all of them are highly nutritious uh, high in uh, protein carbohydrates the healthy carbohydrates fiber antioxidants uh, it's also low in glycemic index, and that's a part why that's one of the reasons why it's so beneficial for people with diabetes. Uh, a glycemic index is a concept that tells us how fast the carbohydrate will be will be released in your blood after you eat it. So if it's high, uh, then that that would be, for example, sugar or white bread then the blood sugar will, would go sharply up after eating that, that particular food and then would go sharply down. If the glycemic index is low, it's more gentle on your blood sugar. And millet uh, is low in glycemic index, which is, which is amazing. Uh, the glycemic index of millet is 53 on average, White rice has a glycemic index of 72 and refined wheat 74. So that makes them uh, kind of high uh, glycemic index foods. And millet uh, is, is low glycemic index. So that makes it uh, really good for people with diabetes, but also for people who are overweight and want to prevent the development of diabetes. And when the researchers analyzed the, the findings and the effect of millet consumption on fasting plasma glucose, fasting blood sugar, but also post-meal blood sugar, uh, they found out that millet decreased uh, uh, fasting plasma glucose by 12% and post-meal glucose by 15%. And in people with prediabetes, uh, the researchers noted that A1C, uh, the marker of long-term glycemic control, reduced um, was reduced from 6.7 to 5.7 percent, which is a reduction uh, by one absolute percent, which is pretty astonishing for one specific food. And you know, when we're talking about millet, sometimes people may be just wondering. What about grains in general? Grains that are high in carbohydrates. 
uh, are they healthy foods or are, are they foods that we should be avoiding? Uh, so let's look at the whole grains as one, uh, one whole group. That would include whole wheat bread and oatmeal and whole wheat pasta and different kinds of grains, brown rice and barley and rye and other kinds of grains. Uh, and a meta-analysis of prospective cohort studies has shown uh, that whole grains decrease all-cause mortality, your risk of dying from any cause, by 16% by just consuming uh, the, the major um, driver is consuming at least 30 grams of whole grains per day. And you get even more benefits when you eat two or three servings per day. And the same for cardiovascular mortality. Uh, your risk of dying from uh, cardiovascular disease is decreased by 18% if you eat three servings of whole grains per day. And your cancer mortality or your risk of dying from cancer is decreased by 12% by just eating your whole grains. So the short answer uh, to the complex question, uh, are whole grains beneficial for you? Absolutely, they are. And millet is one of them. And uh, now you may be wondering, what can I do with millet? If you've never used millet in your kitchen, uh, let me share two recipes with you. Uh, this is one of my uh, favorites for breakfast, millet waffles, where you combine one cup of uncooked millet with one cup rolled oats and blend them in your Vitamix with four cups of water. Add a little bit of salt and vanilla, and you may add lemon zest if you'd like. And just that makes a wonderful batter that will not stick to your pan. And these are highly nutritious, nutritious waffles for your breakfast. And if you are more like a savory person, I have another recipe for you. Uh, cook, uh, cook millet in your Instapot. You can use the program for rice on your Instapot or just in a regular pot as you would cook rice and then add all the veggies like onion and carrots and celery and then flax seeds so that they will stick together, uh, some garlic and some, uh, some spices. And you just combine these all together and bake them in the oven. And it's, it's, a, it's an amazing millet loaf. And uh, you said that your favorite was a millet toast. Uh, what? Where do you buy the bread, um, Chuck? I, it, I just, uh, well, don't tell my wife, but it was actually an ex-girlfriend about 10 years ago uh, who turned me on to it. Um, it's, I, I want to say it's by Food for Life. Um, it's in the frozen food section where they keep the, the frozen breads. And uh, it's it comes in a yellow package and it's mm. just millet, millet bread. And it is the most delicious bread that I've ever tasted, like straight up toasted. You don't need, I don't even add anything to mm. it, Dr. Kaliova. I just do dry toast and it is oh so good once it hits your lips. But uh, something tells me though and that it pales in comparison to those millet waffles that mm. you that you have because those things look just crumb diddly umptious. They are. They are so delicious. And I need to tell you a funny story. When I became vegan, when I was 14, uh, one of my major disasters was cooking millet <laughs> because <laughs> I discovered millet and I was like, oh, I read millet is so high in nutrients and antioxidants. It's like a superfood. And from now on, I, I will be cooking millet. And but I was only 14. I didn't know how to cook. And my mom said, OK, if you want to do your vegan diet, you need to cook for yourself. <laughs> and she thought we'll, we'll be done in two weeks, right? Mm -hmm. But I was like, okay, deal. <laughs> and I, I came came home with a package of millet and with with this enthusiasm, and I didn't know what to do with it. So yeah, I cooked it, but I didn't know how to season it. 
and the whole family was just laughing at me. They were like, oh, which animal would eat this? A cat wouldn't eat it. A dog wouldn't eat it. So why would you even consider eating it? They sell it as bird food. <laughs> and that's all there's to it. Yeah, you can, you can also get it in a pet section <laughs> as bird food. Anyway... <laughs> Uh, so it took a few experiments. I had to refine my recipes with millet, but I'm glad to report that nowadays millet is just one of my signature dishes. If you come and visit, I'll make you the millet waffles or the millet loaf. I also make delicious uh, millet yogurt uh, as, as a breakfast food. Yeah, uh, millet is just amazing. Ooh, I think that we've discovered a hidden talent. You're quite the chef. <laughs> yeah, I love cooking. Okay, well, now that comes in handy because I think that we can take this show on the road live from Dr. Kaliova's kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, true story, though. That's funny that you mentioned bird food and your family's reaction. When I was growing up, from time to time, my mom would go on these health kicks. She would read something or a friend would tell her something. Not unlike what happens today mm -hmm. when you go online and you see all these different blogs promising the next big thing in health. Well, anyway... She came home one day and was saying that millet was the healthiest food known to man. Kind of like what you just said. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I knew about millet was that my grandfather had a big bag of it to feed those birds, just yeah. like what you were talking <laughs> about. And so I picked up the phone as fast as my little 10-year-old fingers would dial. And I called my dad and I was like, mm -hmm. dad... Mom has lost her mind. She's trying to feed Richard and I bird seed. What is going on? Richard's my brother. And he just thought that that was the funniest doggone thing. Um, and sure enough, mom cooked it. And uh, it was about as bland as could be because she didn't know much about cooking. God bless her. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so that's that's millet. And uh, today I think that it's it's quite delicious and tasty. But it's it's all in the preparation, Dr. Kaliova. It's all in the preparation. Um Speaking of preparation, interesting question about the study. I'm wondering if the researchers looked at um, how the various cooking methods, how mm. you cook it, did that affect the GI value of millet? Yeah, the more the more you cook any grains, the higher their glycemic index will be. But millet starts super low already compared with other grains. So you cook it, you don't want... like the more mushy you make it, the higher the glycemic index will be. But in like with millet, you don't need to worry about it because you start super low. So even if it's a little bit higher uh, by, by a few units, you're still fine. Uh, it's still a better choice for you than to cook white rice or have white bread. No doubt. Um, how does it compare to brown rice, which I assume, well, which I know has a lower glycemic index than white rice? Millet is still lower in glycemic index than brown rice. Uh, okay. So it's one of the superfoods. And interestingly, it's not only good for your health and low in glycemic index, uh, it's also uh, good for the farmer. It's one of the most sustainable foods. It requires... Uh, a small amount of water um, and it can survive even in hot climates with only small amount of water. So, so it's one of the sustainable foods that easy to grow. Uh, it's also cheap. Um, yeah. What else, what else would you like to, to have in a food? I know that that's a uh, super food indeed. That's just straight up magical. Uh, the mm -hmm. magic millet. Uh, Dr. Kaliova, thank you so very much for your time. This has really been just fun as always. I, I say this every single time and I do mean it. You bring such fascinating stuff to the table. I never thought to look at the correlation between millet and diabetes before, but nonetheless, you've unearthed research that does just that. So thank you for bringing it to uh, our attention today. I do greatly appreciate it. It's so much fun to be on the show, Chuck, and I greatly appreciate your questions. You're just so curious and you make it so practical for the listeners, and I greatly appreciate your show.
If your health IQ is a couple of points higher than it was a few minutes ago, go ahead and like this video or subscribe to the YouTube channel. And to take it even higher, head over to Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your favorite shows. Look for the exam room by the Physicians Committee. Hit the subscribe button there as well and help to make your world a healthier place.